Hey guys, we are together to talk about chromosomal disorders now. <clears throat> this is where we are going to learn to apply the information we learned in week two of this course, also found in your textbook in chapter one, um, two specific disorders. And we're gonna talk about the significance of translocations and briefly touch on other structural abnormalities of the chromosomes, more about that in a smaller video about mutations. Um, we're going to identify common features of people who have the following autosomal disorders, trisomies 21, 18, and 13. They are the most commonly found in their full form um, in the human population. We know that other chromosomes can also have trisomies, but in order for that to be a real human being, there has to be a degree of mosaicism. And we're going to identify features of individuals with disorders of the sex chromosomes, such as Klinefelter syndrome, Turner syndrome, um, and trisomy X. So chromosomal disorders come in two basic varieties. There are errors about the number of chromosomes. That's where we have our monosomy, Turner syndrome, trisomies. Um, there are actually tetrasomies and pentasomies that deal with the sex chromosomes. They are rare, but they do happen. Um, and then there are some structural errors. We will talk about translocations in this video. The others, duplication, deletions, and inversions um, happen more commonly when that cellular material is being multiplied during meiosis, during the S phase, um, and bases are added or not added, or they're added in the wrong order. Um, but those are your chromosomal disorders. Normal chromosomes, normal human chromosome, chromosomes, um, there are 46 of them. They package the DNA, keep it nice and tidy so that crossing over and um, dividing into diploid or haploid cells is a neater process. There are 23 pairs of them. One is maternally, one copy in each pair is maternally inherited. One is paternally inherited. This is review. You should know this backwards and forwards. So they reproduce during the S phase. They copy all of their material so that in the nucleus of the cell at that point, there will be 92 chromosomes. Now, there can be errors in that process. Usually um, it involves a wrinkle or fold in the strand of DNA. And so bases are deleted or added. Um, but those are usually involve shorter pieces of genetic material. The big problem in the autosomal disorders happens when they get pulled apart during the M phase to form the chromosomes in the new cell. They have to divide and repackage. That's where a lot of mistakes happen. So they have to separate. Sometimes chromosomes stick to each other and you end up with haploid cells that have double that material. And then the other cell doesn't have any because the two chromosomes went together into the new daughter cell. Um, or you can have translocations where a piece of that material breaks off and sticks to the wrong chromosome. Um, just more review about the structure of a chromosome. Each longitudinal half of a chromosome is called a chromatid. They are joined at the centromere, that little structure that holds them together. The chromatids have short arms. They're called P for petite and long arms, Q, because that's the next letter in the alphabet. Um, I did not come up with that system, but that is what it is. And this is all background to help you understand what can go wrong during that M phase. A um, little bit more about chromosomal structure, homologous chromosomes, just to give you a vocabulary, they're part of a pair. So see there's chromosome one and see how they match. They have the same gene loci. The, um, they are the same length. They have the same amount of DNA um, and they code for the same traits. The difference between the two, the maternal and the paternal are the alleles, those variations um, of trait expression, right? So that's a homologous chromosome. A non-homologous chromosome, if we were to take a piece of one, chromosome one, and stick it onto chromosome two, chromosome two is non-homologous, okay? So they're just from different pairs. So when I talk about translocations, this will make more sense because we'll put it into context. We use the word autosomes to describe the chromosomes on pairs one through 22. Anything that is not a sex chromosome is an autosome. Sex chromosomes are considered separate. We put them last in the karyotype, even though they're fairly large, just because they're different. 
Um, chromosomes can be described, and I will tell you the significance of this in a second, as metacentric, where the centromere is close to the middle, and your Q arms and P arms are more similar in length. Um, submetacentric, you have shorter P arms because the centromere goes a little closer to the top, and acrocentric. So 10 is one of those acrocentric chromosomes where the P arm is really, really, really short. Now, why is this important information for you to know? It's not trivia necessarily, but it's also not something you need to memorize. The reason is that there are some errors that only happen with the acrocentric chromosomes because the P arms are so small that they're more error prone in that way. Or they're more prone to make certain types of mistakes. <clears throat> okay. So now let's talk about translocations. A translocation is an event that occurs when a piece of a chromosome, see this greenish guy here, is broken. And that material wants to go somewhere. It should go right back where it was, but it doesn't. It goes onto this chromosome and gets stuck onto a non-homologous chromosome. Same thing is happening with this one. That little piece of pink is going onto this little piece of... I don't know what color you want to call that teal um, chromosome. So the, the material is there. It's in the wrong place. Now this can occur in mitosis or meiosis during mitosis. Only some of the somatic cells are involved, may have no clinical significance, or it may be implicated in diseases like cancer. It's kind of outside the scope of this lecture, but if you have something to do, you can look that up during meiosis. Um, we have a germline mutation that is present in every cell of the body. Now, this can lead to different complications, which we will explore in the next few slides. Um, the biggest one of which is fertility issues, especially recurrent miscarriage, stillbirth, and um, familial trisomies. That will make sense in a little bit, too. Now, if you want a little more information, this is really basic, really brief. Genome.gov, which is a fabulous site, there's a link to it here, gives you like a 28-second animated clip of what a translocation looks like. It's not really a tricky concept. It's just how it's applied. Um, we have two types of translocations, balanced and unbalanced. We'll start with balanced translocations. So a balanced translocation happens when the right amount of DNA is present in the cell, but some of the material is misplaced to a different chromosome, a non-homologous chromosome, okay? So you can have a somatic mutation. For example, the Philadelphia chromosome. Um, you have material from chromosome 9 that attaches to chromosome 22. It's sort of an exchange. Um, actually, I think it's more of a, yeah, it's a balanced translocation. But anyway, it codes for things that lead to the development of leukemia. And our medications that treat it, when we talk about cancer, you'll see that those treatments actually target that protein um, that's created when this gene expresses itself <clears throat> um, and turns it off. So in a somatic mutation, you might have higher risk for disease, but typically if it's only a few cells, it might not cause any problems. A germline mutation, on the other hand, doesn't change the phenotype of the individual, if it's balanced, but creates problems when that person goes to have a baby. So usually what you end up with is a pattern of recurrent miscarriages and sometimes chromosomal abnormalities, such as trisomy 21, that runs in a family. Most trisomy 21 is caused by non-disjunction, which will happen, we'll talk about later. Um, but a balanced translocation carrier and I'll show you the exact mechanism, and I have a video clip that kind of explains it too, um, has a higher chance of passing on excess genetic material or missing uh, chromosomes that are missing important genetic material. And I'll discuss that in a little bit. There are two common types of balanced translocation. There is the reciprocal type. This is like kids at a lunch table one has an apple, one has a cookie, and they switch. Now, they didn't get the snack they were supposed to get, but they each got a snack. Um, and then there's a Robinsonian, and that would be sort of like, it's what happens when two chromosomes stick together and make one chromosome. And I'll 
explain that in further detail too. And I have a nice video clip of that. So let's talk about reciprocal translocations, those swaps. A reciprocal translocation occurs when two chromosomes swap a piece of chromosomal material. In this example, a piece of chromosomal material from chromosome one has swapped onto chromosome two, and a piece of chromosome two has swapped back onto chromosome one. This is known as a balanced chromosomal translocation because no chromosomal material has been lost or gained. Reciprocal translocations can occur between any two chromosomes. Okay, so that's what a reciprocal translocation looks like. Piece breaks off of one, piece breaks off of the other, they switch places. Um, again, this individual will have all the right genetic material, but let's get to A reciprocal oh, translocation sorry. occurs when two... Well, if you want to replay it, that's your choice. I'm going to move on. A reciprocal translocation oh, for occurs sake. when two... All right. So here's my take on it. If it's a germline mutation, it occurs in all the cells, and the person is called a translocation carrier, a balanced translocation carrier. The carrier type will show 46 chromosomes. The phenotype is normal because all of the genes that need to be there to express their traits are there. There are no extras there are none missing. Okay. So it's balanced. That's what balanced is. And it's reciprocal. Now the problem is in reproduction is that the chromosomes are going to split up. And if a couple of them are affected by translocations, we have copies that are unaffected, copies that are affected. There are some different things that can happen. And I have a graphic that shows this too. Now, let's say it's a translocation, reciprocal translocation between chromosomes 1 and 10, just for sake of argument. So chromosome 1 has some genes for chromosome 10, and chromosome 10 has some genes for chromosome 1 that belong there. Now, if you make a haploid cell, an egg or a sperm, a mature egg, a mature sperm, and the copy that didn't have the translocation on that homologous pair is what's in the haploid cell for both one and 10, right? You have two normal autosomes or two, yeah, two normal autosomes from each pair. That person will have all normal chromosomes with no translocation in their body. Another choice is that they could both, that that haploid cell could contain both abnormal chromosomes. It could have the translocation from chromosome 1 and the translocated chromosome 10, right? So now you have another balanced translocation carrier because all the information that was originally on chromosome 1 is between those two, is split between those two chromosomes and all the information from chromosome 10 is split between those two chromosomes. So if they get the copy that has the translocation for both chromosomes, for both pairs, in that haploid cell, the resulting offspring will be a balanced, a balanced translocation carrier like the parent, okay? The biggest problem happens when we have that haploid cell division, and, you know, we're rolling the dice every time, and inside the new haploid cell, that daughter cell, we have one normal autosome that does not have a translocation from chromosome one. It has all of the information from chromosome one, but chromosome 10 is mixed with genes for chromosome one and chromosome 10. It is missing some from 10 and it is adding some from chromosome one. If we put that together, with the normal chromosome one, we have an abnormal translocated chromosome 10 with mixed material and a chromosome one that has all chromosome one material, we end up with a haploid cell that only has part of the information for chromosome 10, but has extra information for chromosome one. Now I have a graphic that will make that even more clear but that is the essential problem. Now, most of the time, as you have heard from me a couple of times, 
when we add or delete important genetic material to the recipe for a human being, it stops growing, right? Usually early in embryonic periods. So most of the, the pregnancies that result from that one affected chromosome and one normal chromosome are gonna miscarry. There is a very high miscarriage rate with balanced translocation carriers. <clears throat> Sometimes they may develop. If it is a chromosome, if the chromosome affected is something like 21 and you have a little extra information from chromosome 21 um, and not enough information from something else, that's when you're going to have a syndrome. And that'll be a familial syndrome because it tends to run in families. You have a lot of ba balanced translocation carriers and their children um, sometimes end up with these trisomies or monosomies. Um, because of the translocation. All right. If I lost you there, I'll get you back. I, uh, under the unbalanced chromosome thing, I have a diagram that shows how that looks. We're going to talk next about Robertsonian translocations. And this is when two chromosomes stick together and make one giant chromosome. A Robertsonian translocation carrier describes a situation where someone has 45 chromosomes instead of 46. Robertsonian translocation only occur between the acrocentric chromosomes. These are chromosomes 13, 14, 15, 21 and 22. What happens is that two acrocentric chromosomes get stuck together making one large chromosome. The commonest chromosomes to become stuck together are chromosomes 13 and 14 and the next most common are chromosomes 14 and 21. Other possible translocations occur much less frequently. A Robertsonian translocation carrier is healthy. However, problems can arise should the Robertsonian carrier wish to have children. To become a parent, you have to make a mature egg or sperm. Each parent only hands on half their chromosomes into the egg or sperm. Normally, each pair of chromosomes come together, exchange genetic material, known as crossing over, prior to dividing. For Robertsonian translocation carriers, this process is more complicated. In this example, Carl is a translocation carrier. He has one chromosome 13 stuck to chromosome 14. He also has another normal standalone chromosome 13 and 14. If he hands on the normal chromosome 13 and the normal chromosome 14, then the child will be healthy and have normal chromosomes. If he hands on the translocated chromosome on its own, that is the 13 and 14 stuck together, his child will be a healthy translocation carrier like himself. However, if Carl hands on the translocated chromosome together with one of the standalone chromosomes 13 or 14, the baby would have a whole extra chromosome 13 or 14, as Carl's partner will hand on a standalone chromosome 13 and 14 too. The baby will end up with three copies of either 13 or 14. This is known as trisomy chromosome 13 or 14. Babies with trisomy 14 will miscarry. Babies with trisomy 13, known as Patau syndrome, miscarry, although some may survive to birth. The condition is not compatible with life. If Carl carried a translocation involving chromosome 14 and 21, he would have a risk of trisomy 14 or trisomy 21, known as Down syndrome. The risk of having a baby with Down syndrome is higher if the woman, example Carl's sister, carries the translocation. Translocation families can all... Okay, so that was a Robertsonian translocation. I know that looked confusing um, <clears throat> in the sense that when that person reproduces, sometimes they will form a haploid cell that has both a standalone chromosome as she was terming it, and the translocated chromosome. Um, sometimes they just pass on the translocated chromosome. But it's a similar concept. The balanced translocated, it's a balanced translocation. So that person is a carrier, they're healthy, their children might be or might not be. All right. So now we're going to talk about what an unbalanced translocation is and what the implication of that is for nursing. Now, an unbalanced translocation happens when you have a net gain or loss of genetic material. So balanced translocation, everything is still there. Um, 
but it's in the wrong place. With an unbalanced translocation, either we have too many of one thing or too few. Um, the process is a little more complicated, but you have the insertion or deletion of genetic material from a non-homologous chromosome. So something breaks off and it joins with the other and you have one chromosome that doesn't have enough material and one that does. Um, sometimes a strand of that will get lost in a de novo mutation and you have, or it gets repaired, but in that repair, we have like extra bases. Um, so there's extra material. Most of the time, unbalanced translocations come from inheritance, um, and they are inherited from carriers of balanced translocation. The DNA deck shuffles to form gametes. Some haploid cells will have that extra material or missing material. They're the ones that get passed on, um, and then they're joined with a normal chromosome from the other parent. So here's, here's sort of our um, diagram for that. So here we have parent one, not a carrier, two normal chromosomes. Parent two has a balanced translocation between these non-homologous chromosomes. And you see like there's a mixture. This looks, could be, you know, a reciprocal translocation, right? They swapped material. Now what you end up with, if this haploid cell takes this chromosome and it's got a mixture of genetic material from two non-homologous chromosomes, this purple stuff is going to match the normal chromosome, but this pink stuff here is extra and it's going to be duplicated on the other, whatever that pair was, that non-homologous pair. Um, so we end up with an unbalanced chromosome. This can lead to things like unbalanced, I mean, I'm sorry, trisomies, monosomies, um, where you have extra, let's say it's 14 and 21. Um, you have extra material from chromosome number 21, and there's missing material from chromosome number 14. <clears throat> Again, if you know, if you're confused about that, email me, reach out somehow. I'll try to make it more clear. It's almost a little bit hard to visualize, but the basic idea is that when there's the right amount of genetic material, most of the time things are normal. It's when we have to sort of shuffle that deck and now um, we take a chance that they're gonna get one affected gene and one normal gene or one affected chromosome and one normal chromosome. And there's gonna be duplication of material from the normal one onto the translocated one. Let me know if that doesn't make sense. So here's another graphic for that. Um, unbalanced translocations can happen in somatic cells too. When they do, um, you can get cancers like lung cancer, again, outside the scope of this conversation. Germline cancers can result in translocation trisomies, translocation monosomies, and you can have deletion or duplication of material and there's a wide range of problems. And here is the graphic that I really wanted to show you. So here's the idea. You've got this person with the mixed chromosome, the translocated chromosome, um, and then they have another one. So these two swapped material, and now you have an event where we have to make haploid cells. <clears throat> so this is your eggs or sperm. This is a pair where everything is normal. It's actually not a pair of chromosomes, but it's like, say you have a haploid cell with chromosome one and chromosome 10, we'll use again. There's your chromosome one, perfectly normal. There's your chromosome 10, perfectly normal because it came from the two normal chromosomes. This one here and this one here. So all the genetic material is present and it's in the right place. The problem happens you know, we have carriers here, more balanced translocation carriers, about 50% chance that a child resulting from this haploid cell will arise being a balanced translocation carrier themselves because they have both abnormal chromosomes from those two non-homologous pairs. So all the materials there still misfiled in the wrong place. 
but it's all there. Here is what happens when you get one normal copy and one abnormal copy. So see how there's extra yellow on this purple guy? Some of the purple's missing and some of the yellow is extra. Now we have an unbalanced translocation. And when that person goes to reproduce with a person who has normal chromosomes, this person is going to have that unbalanced translocation pattern where there's extra genetic material from this set and missing genetic material from this set. So the purple is missing a little and the yellow has extra. And sometimes depending on the size of the, you know, the translocation and, you know, where, which chromosome is affected, um, that will sort of color the, um, the way that those genes express themselves. Okay. So that was translocation and we're going to move on to non-disjunction and then we're going to take a break. Non-disjunction events happen during gametogenesis. And I spelled that wrong. I will correct it. Um, in normal gametogenesis, in meiosis two, the chromosomes duplicate and divide a second time. This time they're going to do two separate cells with two copies of each and then divide again, resulting in the formation of four haploid daughter cells, right? We already talked about normal gametogenesis, genesis, I'm sorry, in the last, I think it was about two weeks ago. What we get with non-disjunction is that two of those chromosomes stick together. Okay, so out of those four cells, one of them ends up with two, when there should be one, it's a haploid cell, and one cell ends up with no chromosomes from that pair. They stuck together, one went and, you know, the, both of them went into one haploid cell and none of them went into the other one. So the result is the formation of daughter cells that will lead to aneuploidy. It is more common in the maternal gamete than it is in the paternal because the eggs are older. Um, so some disorders of aneuploidy include monosomy and trisomies, Jacob syndrome um, on the sex chromosome, trisomy X. And we're going to take a break here and then we'll pick it up again when we talk about the aneuploid disorders.